Portland, Oregon. He's a writer out there, doing quite well. He's going for sixty-four thousand dollars. We have a talk to Roberta. Roberta, how you doing? I'm great. And how did you meet David? I met David at a Valentine's Day party that was given by a mutual friend of ours who set us up to be a blind date. All right, fine. You're up to thirty-two. You won thirty-two thousand. That's great. We're going up to sixty-four. How do you feel? Good. Strong. Good. Good. All right, still have that 50-50. We're five away from a million, but here it comes for $64,000. let us play. $64,000. During World War II, what general was widely known by the nickname the Desert Fox? You're smiling again. Bernard Montgomery, Erwin Rommel, George Patton, Albert Speer. Yes, I used to play little military games in my teenage years, including one called Africa Corps. And uh, Montgomery was out there, but he was the British guy who beat the correct answer, which is B. Erwin Rommel. Erwin Rommel, the Desert Fox, one of the most famous of all general, uh, German generals. Is that going to be your final answer? Yes, it is. That's right, it was Erwin Rommel. All right, we're going for $125,000. Could you believe it? You're four questions away from $1 million. Well, you're taking it all in stride. Good. Here it is for $125,000. In which of the following films do both Ben Affleck and Matt Damon not appear? Dogma. Goodwill Hunting. The Talented Mr. Ripley. Chasing Amy. All right, I've, I've seen, I've seen Goodwill Hunting, and of course, them both being in there is a big deal about that. Um, I, well, I know enough about Dogma to know that they are both in there. Chasing Amy is the tricky one because they were, if they were both in there, they were both playing small supporting parts. Um, I, at least one of them was in there. I remember watching it and and seeing seeing one of them go by. I cannot at the moment recall whether both of them were in there. What I know, about Ripley? Well, I know you know I know that that uh, Damon stars in it. I don't know if if he's finally decided to make one without Affleck <laughs> hanging around. Um, <clears throat> didn't didn't get around to seeing it. Um, I don't remember publicity for Ripley stressing that Affleck was involved in my valley, although heaven knows he, he could have slipped on. But I think my inclination is to go ahead and uh, go with the talent of Mr. Ripley. Want to make it your final answer? Yes, let's go ahead and make it my final answer. Yeah, you got up for $125,000. The talent of Mr. Ripley. The movie just Matt Damon made. Are you excited? I'm getting excited uh, for you. Yeah. Let's take a look at it now. Here it comes for a quarter million dollars. What kind of powder? is inside an Etch-a-Sketch drawing toy. Graphite, aluminum, silicon, magnesium. You played with an Etch-a-Sketch at yes, the time? Yes, I did. And... Even in the answer to this, powder has to coat the screen, and the lines you get are drawing through the powder, which means, obviously, they couldn't be graphite, because that would be black. You can't draw a light in black, so, so graphite's not it. Silicon is, doesn't work. It's, it's metal. I remember hearing way back that it was metal. Um,
I'm strongly inclined toward thinking that it's that it was aluminum. This was the last level at which 50-50, I considered it worthwhile to take a 50-50 chance to keep moving up. Even though I think I've got it narrowed down to a about a 60-40, I might as well go ahead and take the 50-50. You want to take it then? All right, fine. Computer, take away two of those wrong answers for David leaving one wrong answer and the correct one. Well, just like uh, you thought. <clears throat> yes, just as I thought. Um, it's one nice thing about being a fatalist. You're not disappointed. <laughs> just, you know. Anything that makes me think, think of it being magnesium there. I, yeah, I told myself I would go on at this point. I've, if I were at 50-50, I've convinced myself that, that I've got it more than 50-50. I'll go, that's easy to do when you're wrong. <laughs> um, 32, solves my current problems, 250 fixes my life in a much more serious way. I think it's worth the gamble at this point. So I will go ahead and gamble, and uh, hard as that is for me. You know, I mean, that's why I had to tell myself to do this in advance, because I, by nature, if I've got something, I want to hang on to it for dear you life. You know, in a minute, I'm going to pick you up and carry you out of here. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I mean, I, I just, but I, I think, I think I'm going to go ahead and trust, trust my responses. If I'm wrong, I, I can live with it. So, we're going to make that? The final answer. Yes, it's a moment. When we come back, he goes for five hundred thousand dollars. Quarter million dollars, David. Take a look. Okay, that's going to take care of your problems, as you call them, and also a trip to Europe. Now, what about Roberta? Roberta, what about you? What would you like? Well, we have a good friend who composed an opera last year that we think is pretty great, and we would love to put up some money to back a production of it. An opera? Oh, yeah. Yeah? You it's a chamber it? opera. I mean, it's cheap. It's not big, heavy production. Uh-huh. Well, that, that's <laughs> something unusual. We've never heard that here on our show, but there you go. All right, now, let's talk about you. How are you feeling right now? Very happy. Are you nervous at all? Excited? Mm -hmm. I, I excited. You're going to lose $218,000 if you miss here, David. That's how important this is. All the lifelines are gone now. You're two away from one million. But here it comes for a half million dollars, 500000 Let's play. Okay, maybe you know this, maybe you don't. Most of the world's supply of cork comes from a species of what tree? Oak. Hickory. Aspen, birch, cork. Well, that's it's hoping. Um, I was hoping something would flash into mind. Um, I know, I know things about lots of these trees, but nothing I know about them makes me, leads me to any kind of certainty about, about what cork comes from, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to show that clingy nature and cling to the 250000 Nothing wrong with clinging to a quarter million dollars, my friend, you know that, but I tell you what, you know, you've got a lot of intuition here, you're a writer, you've done a lot of research over the years on your various stories. If you were to take a guess... If I were in a position where I felt I could guess, I, I probably would have, I had it sort of between Hickory and Birch and probably would have trudged Birch. No, the answer is okay. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. 
for David McGrath. I'm happy you won that bet. Good luck to you. Okay? Well, I know that quarter million dollars is going to make a big difference in, in their lives, and we're happy for it.